Hi everyone, welcome to Math Key. In today's video, I'm going to show you a very simple approach of multiplying both like and unlike terms. Believe me, it is real. Multiplying like and unlike terms is far easier than adding and subtracting both like and unlike terms. Is it really possible? Oh yes, it is possible. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to do that. All you need to do is just to follow the examples that follow. So before we start, we're going to bear in mind some simple rules. Whenever a negative operation multiplies a negative operation, the result must be positive. Or when a positive operation multiplies a positive operation, the result must also be positive. However, whenever a negative operation multiplies a positive operation, the result must be negative. And when a positive operation multiplies a negative operation, the result must also be negative. Now, if you check the first two examples we're having here, the first operation you see is negative and the second operation is also negative. And you can see that the result is positive. And um, you check the next multiplication, the first operation here is positive and the second is also positive and you can see that the result is equally positive. What we are saying here is this, whenever the two operations are the same, then the result must be positive. Okay, if we check the last two multiplications we are having here, you can see that the first operation is negative and the second operation is positive, however the result is negative. And uh, you check the last one here. A positive operation is multiplying a negative operation and the result is negative. Now, what we are also saying in this case is that whenever one of the operations is negative, the result must be negative. And um, lastly, I'm going to also let you to understand that um, in carrying out these multiplications, operations will have to multiply operations, then numbers will have to multiply numbers, and of course, the same letters must multiply the same letters. Now, there is a key thing you should understand. The letters that you're multiplying must be written down eventually in alphabetical order. So, let's just go into some examples. Suppose we have negative 5x multiplying 4xy. Okay, the first thing we're going to do here is to make sure that each of the terms has its operation. Okay, the first term you see here, which is negative 5x, has a negative operation right there and it looks like the second term does not have an operation. That is not true. In mathematics, whenever a number or a letter is written without any operation, by default, it has an invisible positive operation right at the front, okay? Um, so what we're going to do right here is to shift our 4xy and introduce that invisible operation. That's because a number can either be positive or negative. A number cannot have a multiplication operation, neither can a number have a division operation. It either has a negative operation or a positive operation. So what we'll do here now is to group the terms, we'll group the first term, and of course we'll have to group the second term. The operations will have to multiply operations, the numbers will have to multiply numbers, and of course the same letters will have to multiply the same letters. So let's just get started now. The first negative operation multiplies the positive operation in the second term, and that's exactly a negative result, okay? So we have our negative result down there, followed by the number now. So the number 5 will have to multiply the number 4, and that's exactly 20. The next we're having here is the x variable that will multiply the x variable in the next term. So x times x gives us exactly x to the second power. If you don't understand how x times x is x, well, please check our video on multiplication of like terms. That will make it a lot easier for you. Okay, so uh, the next thing you can see here is the y variable. If you look carefully, you will see that the first term, negative 5x, doesn't even have the y variable. So what you will do here is this, okay? Since there is no y variable in the first term, you will just carry the, 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 the y variable in the second term and then keep it in your result. And that's the answer, okay? So this is just the way it is done. A negative operation multiplies a positive operation. The two numbers multiply and, of course, the letters will have to multiply themselves. Now, let's see another example. Suppose we have negative Q multiplying negative 8PQ. How do we go about this? The same way. There is something you should remember. 
whenever a letter is written without any number right at the front, by default, it also has an invisible constant coefficient of 1. A coefficient is a number that is written directly in front of a letter. Okay, for instance, the letter you see T, okay, is mathematically written as 1T. But usually it is not ideal to write 1t. We already understand that it is 1t that is there. We do not indicate the coefficient of 1. But when the need arises, we have to introduce the t. Similarly, if we have k, for instance, what do you see? How many k do you see here? Of course, it's 1k. So we can rewrite this as 1k. Okay? Now let's go back to our question. By default, we're going to introduce a constant coefficient of 1 in front of the variable q. So we have 1 right there. All right? Now, uh, the next thing we're going to do is to group the, the terms. We we'll group the first term and group the second term, and then follow the same principles, the same rules. Operations multiply operations, numbers multiply numbers, and of course, the same letters will have to multiply the same letters. Okay, so let's start now. The negative operation in the first term will have to multiply the negative operation in the second term, and that's exactly a positive operation followed by the numbers now. So the number 1 will have to multiply the number 8, and that's 8, followed by the letter, the variable Q. The variable Q is in the first term, so you can multiply the Q in the second term, and that's again Q to the second power. By observation, you can see that, like the first example, there is no P in the first term. So what are we going to do? All we have to do here is just to carry our P and put it in our result, and that's it. Now, there is something that is not right here. Remember, I told you that the alphabets or the letters or the variables must be written down in alphabetical order. So, what are we going to do here? We are going to rearrange this so that the alphabetical order will be in place. Okay? So, the first thing we're going to do is to keep our A's. In the alphabetical system, P comes before Q. So, we'll put our P here. And of course, we have to put our Q here. This is just the final answer. Take note that we've neglected the positive operation, and that's because it is irrelevant. Remember, I told you earlier that a number without an operation has an invisible operation. Now, we can also decide to remove the operation, that plus sign. When do we remove the plus sign? When the term is single. So you can see plus 8Q square P is a single term, so we can just remove the operation and it becomes ordinary 8 P Q square. Let us take another example. Supposing we have 8 X Y square multiplying 2 X cube Y. How do we go about this? It is still exactly the same way we did solve the former example. Again, you can see the first term 8 X Y square looks like it doesn't have an operation. By default, we just say that a term without an operation has a positive operation right there, which is invisible. So what we're going to do here is just to introduce the plus sign operation in front of the term, and it completes it. The next thing here, we're going to group each of the terms. We'll group the first term, and we'll also group the second term, okay? So let's follow the same rules. Operations multiply operations. Numbers multiply numbers. And of course, letters will have to multiply letters. The same letter to say, okay? So um, let's start. Plus multiplies the minus you see here, and that's exactly a negative operation. Then uh, the next we have 8 multiplies 2, and that's exactly 16, followed by the x terms that will multiply themselves. So x multiply x cubed like this, and it gives us exactly x to the fourth power. And of course, y squared will have to multiply y, and that gives us exactly y to the third power. Power. So this is how the multiplication is done. It is not a big deal. It is not hard. All you have to do is just to follow the rules. Let us take the last example for today. So let's just say we have the expression 3gh to the fourth power multiplying negative 4h multiplying 5fgh to the second power. Wow, this is very scary. Don't worry. Okay, so let's see how we go about it. Remember, we have to check that each of the terms has its operation in place. Okay, so the first term does not have the operation, so we'll give it an operation. The second term has its negative operation. And of course, the third term doesn't have an operation. So we'll have to shift it and give it a positive operation. The next thing here, we're going to group each of the terms, okay? We'll group the first term, we'll group the second term, and of course, we'll group the third term. Now, let's follow the rules. We're multiplying or following the same rules. 
the, the, the operations multiply operations, the numbers multiply numbers, and the letters, of course, they will have to multiply themselves. Now, let's get started. The first positive operation multiplies the negative operation in the second term, and that's absolutely a negative operation. That's what result. So, the negative operation multiplies the positive operation, and, of course, the result has to be negative. So, plus times minus times plus, again, is minus. Okay? The next is the numbers, of course. 3 will multiply 4, and that's exactly 12, okay? And 12 will have to multiply 5. That gives us exactly 60. And after that, the next on the line we are having here is G. If you look carefully, you will see that the G is not in the middle term. So what we're going to do is just to skip the middle term and go to the last term directly. So G multiplies G in the last term, and that gives us G to the second power. That's like G squared. And of course, um, the last term variable in the first term, which is h to the fourth power, will have to multiply h in the middle term. This time there is a middle term here. There, uh, there's h, there's a variable in the middle term. So h to the fourth power multiply multiplies this h, and um, that's h to the fifth power. And h to the fifth power multiplies h to the second power, and that gives us exactly h to the seventh power. Okay, and um, it looks like we are done. The first term doesn't have the f variable. The second term doesn't have the f variable, but the third term has the f variable. So what we're going to do here, since the first and the second term don't have, we're just going to keep the f in the result. So everything becomes negative 60g squared h raised to the power of 7 f. And that's all. But um, there is something that is not in place the alphabetical order okay f comes before g and then h so if we rearrange the whole thing it becomes negative 60 f g square h raised to the power of 7. thanks so much for watching if you want to see more of this video please subscribe to our youtube channel bye